Hey guys, what is up? So today in this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about how I basically bossed up. I went from corporate to full-time influencer. I mean, to be honest, you can boss up both ways, but I want to let you guys in on my journey on how I went from one profession <laughs> to another. So keep watching and just get ready with me. I basically want to share this story so that, you know, a lot of people who are wanting to do the same thing maybe can, you know, have inspiration, motivation. And to be honest, I also want to let you guys in on the amount of work that it took to get to this place. It was never a straight road. A lot of milestones, a lot of moments that were just congratulatory. Such amazing things happened, but a lot of things, obstacles did get into the way. So before we get started, this is actually a full lace wig that I found. I had probably dyed it jet black back then. I forgot I had it. It's a little bit of dye on it, but brand new. I'm gonna go ahead and install it. I have no idea what brand this is from, what hair this is, what lace, <laughs> no clue. It's just been sitting in my wig stash. I didn't pluck this. I really don't wanna have to pluck it. Damn, should I pluck it? I'm gonna have to pluck it off camera. <gasps> I mean, I could get away with it, but I'm gonna pluck it because I know I'm not gonna be super satisfied. All right, so I've always been like this major, huge workaholic. This is nothing new to me, like you know what I'm saying? So I got my first job when I was 16 years old. And from then, I've always just had many jobs. Like when I say many, I mean like a whole shitload. I just always like to be able to support myself and take care of myself. And for me, having a job was important, even while being in school. Did I necessarily need to have a job? No, but for me, I like to be super busy. I don't know if it's the New York in me or what, but it's just something that is in my DNA. Actually, my whole family is like this, you know? Basically, I hated school. I'm not a school person, I hate you know, whatever, but you need it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's necessary for, you know, just the way society is and it's an accomplishment. I went to school. I first started off going to Delaware State University. I wanted to go to it because it was an HBCU, but I ended up just not really enjoying my experience there. I had low SAT scores, so I was in a program where I had to actually start school two months earlier than everybody else. Uh, so by the time school started, I already hated school and I had a whole year to go. So I ended up applying to FIT and getting into to my dream school. While I was there, the way FIT works, you basically have to have two degrees. So you have to get an associate and then you have a choice to change that degree for your bachelor's or you could just stick with, you know, your associate degree and just progress into the bachelor's of the four-year degree. And then together it makes a four-year degree. Now for me, I didn't really care for the fashion industry as much. And I didn't know that the major that I ended up finding was even a major. So I love the home industry, um, not interior design, but home product development. And that's basically what I went to school for. I actually saw that this home design company was hiring for internships and it was paid. So my professor used to always stress, to never do an internship that's free. Always do one that's paid. So he only recommended paid internships. I ended up getting one, it was 15 an hour, and honestly, going from them Ulta and the other jobs, 15 sounded like amazing money. And it was, it was. It really held me down for a long time. So I'm there or whatever, and you know, the whole point is I still have a whole year of school left, but I'm trying to make a great impression because I want to get hired when I when I graduate college. Like, I want a job, I want a good job. So I'm, I have to be busy. Like, I like to have a lot of things going on. I'm like, okay, we gotta finish this by a certain age. You wanna graduate by this age. You wanna this and that by this age. And my life is basically always worked off of timelines, which is, you know, I'm learning like, let's not do that anymore because it puts more stress onto you. I just wanted to have school done. I hated school. I didn't wanna be there longer than what I needed to be there for. So the goal was to get in and get the fuck out ASAP, okay? All through college, I took like seven to eight classes per semester, six to seven to eight classes per semester, plus a full-time job. Then I took my Senior year of school, I ended up having seven classes, no, eight classes, a full-time job and a part-time job. But to me, it just, it just, it flowed. I would probably go to school maybe twice a week, but I would do classes from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., which means I'm getting up at 7 a.m. to be at class by 9 a.m. And then class would usually end at 10 p.m., but we got out an hour early, depending on the professor. And I would get home around like 10.30 p.m. That was like my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Fast forward to after that, I ended up getting hired. I'm using glue today, by the way, guys, and you guys know I hate glue. So I end up getting hired by my internship that I've been at. This makes it going into like the two the two into three year type of mark. Get hired. That's when I think I started to decide this can't be life. Now don't get me wrong, I had the best corporate job, the best CEO, the best everything. 
amazing job, amazing company, but the pay was just not it. Like I just, there's, when I thought about it, I'm like, there's no way that you can possibly have a life or live a comfortable life with the salary that you're getting paid. Like it was mind blowing to me. Like it didn't make sense. So the year when I got hired, I'm gonna say, I forgot what year, it had to have been like 2016. And I already wanted to leave and move to Atlanta. And my mom was like, no, you know, stay in New York for a little bit, get the experience. And then from there you can move, you know, like it doesn't make sense to, yes, I had the experience as an intern, which I was technically doing more as an intern than I was doing full time. And I was getting paid more as an intern than I was full time. Cause now it's not hourly no more. Really think about it. I was like, it really hit me once they hired me because I'm thinking like, okay, after I graduate, I probably took off a month to myself or two, two months to myself. Now I wasn't going backpack. I was still broke, but I still wanted to like, you know, maybe take three weeks off and go live my life and then come back and be like, okay, this is work. But because I started off as an internship and went into a full-time job, there was really no time for that. It was kind of like, you're full-time now. You already know your job. So we, no. So they did say, if you want, because it's kind of busy right now in June, we prefer if you do like take, you know, two weeks off to yourself or whatever in like August. Let's prolong a little bit because there's a lot of things that need to be done. Cool. That's when it really set in that this is going to be my real fucking life every fucking day. Like getting up at seven in the morning and coming home at 6 p.m. and doing it all over again. Like I'm like, there's no summer break, there's no spring break, there's no break. And that was the most miserable summer I've had in my life because it was like realization that this is this is what it is like once you leave college like yes the extra load of having to go to school after work or before work is off my shoulder but then at the same time you still ain't got no life because you come home at 6 37 after rush hour and then it's like go to sleep early so you're not tired for work the next morning and do it all over again like just thinking about it i was like no there's no fucking way that this is what life is i couldn't do it and then i started to do youtube youtube then came into place and this is where life became a little bit more crazy but it was completely worth it so started doing youtube i think two of my videos got really popular two of my first ones that's in the millions now blew up cool i still wasn't getting paid or anything all right so i'm waiting for this to dry by the way guys but i wasn't getting paid or anything my videos was like in the hundred thousands and it just just was growing i didn't know how to claim the money. Like I didn't know how to apply for monetiza monetization. And then when I did, something was off and it was not working. So I'm like starting to get depressed. Cause I'm like, damn, I could see the money building up. I have all the hours, I have all the, I have all the requirements to get monetized, but I don't know how to freaking do it. Nobody I was asking was trying to help me or they were trying to help me. There was nobody to ask, okay? If you do YouTube, especially back then, there was nobody to ask, especially if you have a certain amount of, less than a certain amount of followers. So it just makes it kind of like you're, so much obstacles because I could have easily just gave up and said fuck this shit and continue with my corporate job and never look at YouTube. But I was like, there has to be a way where something has to fucking work. So then I found out about the YouTube space in New York. So if you don't know about the YouTube space in New York and you do YouTube or even if you're experienced or whatever, get on it. If it's open right now, I don't know with COVID in New York or whatever. I found out about the YouTube space and they had an event. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go. So I could be around other YouTubers and ask them the questions. Ended up going and met a bunch of influencers. And I was like, what is this place? Cause the one is cool as shit. Like the YouTube space is so cool. And if you have over 10K subscribers, you can like go there and rent out rooms and record it for free, use any equipment or anything. So if you're in New York, I highly suggest you check out the YouTube space. It's not only in New York though. It's in New York, LA, Toronto, Tokyo, and other places. So check it out when you get a chance. Anyways, went there because I was like, there has to be a way to get paid. And this is the only way I know who else might know. And you have to answer me in person. Well, not have to, but you know. Everyone there was amazingly nice. And then I ended up meeting someone named Dame Drops. He's popping as shit. He does all food reviews and he helped me. He completely helped me. Um, he helped me and then somebody else helped me. And I was able to apply for monetization. So now I'm getting paid like, you know, a couple of hundreds every week, but I'm still like, you know, it's not enough to live off of. So I'm not even thinking about leaving you, leaving New York or whatever. But I started to get a little bit more consistent. Come on, please try normal. I started to get a little bit more consistent. And so this is when life became super crazy because I was working, yes, I was working from nine to five. Again, I'm, I'm gonna say seven to seven to six thirty because you know, I get up at five and then I lived in New York, so I have to get on the train. 
So <laughs> I have to be up by seven to be at the train station by eight o'clock to find a parking and then get to work by nine o'clock. I usually was there like nine or eight ish. <laughs> and then leave at five, sometimes 4.30 and get home by at least six or 6.30. From then I would go into YouTube mode and I would work all night. Okay, like I would be recording, and mind you, at the same time, me and my sister were sharing a room. My sister's four years older than me. So me and her are sharing a bedroom. So I have a little little wallpaper on the wall. I think I'm only, I think I'm gonna do two layers. I have a wallpaper on the wall and I would just record. She'd be sleeping. I have a video where I'm actually doing a hair tutorial and she's snoring in the background. And I'd be up until two, three, four, five, six in the morning. And then from there, I, I might take a 30 minute little nap, wake up, straight in the shower, straight to the train go to work and do it all over again. Like there were some nights where I didn't even freaking sleep. I, I wasn't even thinking about quitting my full-time job. It was kind of just like, I loved it so much that it just was so worth it. You get what I'm saying? When I decided to really move to Atlanta, was that January because I went through a really bad breakup with a really toxic ex that was around for way too long than what he should have been around for. And I was like, the fuck am I doing here? Like, I should actually leave. Like, and my aunt was like, yeah. Like, we talked about it and then she encouraged me. And then I didn't even give him a two week notice. I gave him a two month notice. <laughs> One, I, I really loved my job, I respected them, and I felt like I, you know, just wanted to get them a heads up, you know what I'm saying? This gotta dry, y'all. All right, guys, pause real quick. I didn't put any glue at the sides of my ears just because I really want to do that part last. Those areas lift really quickly, so I just wanna have, I wanna focus on those, like, give it more TLC, okay? I don't wanna go straight from, they do one straight line, and you never should actually, you should actually break it up. So right here, and then, right here or right here and then these three it's still kind of white all right hold on i gotta focus i can't tell no story as i'm doing this yes yeah, so my ceo she was the sweetest person ever and she actually looked out for me and she was like you know as you since you're going to atlanta she was just like you know how are you gonna get money how are you gonna function in georgia like being that i wasn't gonna you know i'm starting youtube and that's all i really have so she was sweet enough to make a position for me and I was able to work from Atlanta, right? Now during this time, I'm doing YouTube at my aunt's house and I'm a workaholic. Like I'm not doing, I'm not giving myself no time off. I only wanna do YouTube, I only wanna work. I'm so invested in the numbers and, but then I wasn't getting paid. I'm working with all these hair brands and they not paying me. Not one motherfucker is paying me and I'm getting so irritated because they want me to do a video for them and yes, I want the free hair, I want the free wigs and I wanna put you guys onto it and I also wanna show you guys techniques but then I ain't getting paid for it. But then I'm like, I wanna make money. I know like I wanted to get my my YouTube pay, like the, you know when YouTube pays you, I wanted to get that up to a certain amount, but I can only do that by getting more views and by getting more views, you need to have more content. By having more content, you need free hair or else you gotta pay for it yourself, which is you taking cut out of the little money that you're getting. So I'm like, okay, I kinda have to still work with them. This is where it gets even more crazy. Oh, come on glue, don't do me dirty like this. All right, I have my alcohol and my paper towel Q-tips. So yeah, so I decide, you know, we can never have too much money, right? So even though my job in New York is like, you know, helping me out, um, I kind of had like a little issue with one of the people, the person that was supposed to be my boss. And so I got a little job down here. Got a little job down here and it was a home, it was a design company and I was so happy to be there. I was like, oh my God. So I'm working under this girl who just learned social media just by playing around. So like I say, figure it at the time my YouTube was growing, she knows something about something. Cool. What? I came in there one day and this bitch had me folding tissue paper for like eight hours. Folding tissue paper for the packaging. And as I was folding tissue paper, your girl was fucking crying. All right, I had paper, I had tear marks on the freaking paper and the girl kept trying to tell me, you gotta fold it on the this and the that. Make sure it's one inch and it's three fourths of this. It's fucking tissue paper. First of all, I only lasted seven days. But I would have never stayed. And it's so hard to go from a job where life is so free to a job where they're actually watching you. Like, and I was also the only black girl, as it usually is when it comes to me being in a home product environment. I, I'm used to it, I don't mind it. So I'm folding motherfucking tissue paper. And she's like, oh, you're only gonna be doing this for like an hour until the girl for the social media comes in and you're gonna work under her. I was crying as I was folding that tissue paper because I'm like, this is not what the fuck I went to school for. I was like, can I go on break? I went in the car and I was crying. And like, you know when you, you like really hate something, all I gotta do is call my mom, my grandmother, and they would be like, get out. <laughs> so 
I literally, I literally called my mom and she was like, call them back. Like, call you, call them and tell them that you're not feeling good and you're not going to finish the rest of the day. I did that. And right after I left, I went straight to my P.O. box. I picked up all my packages and I started charging from that day on. So whatever brand didn't want to pay me, oh, they paid me after that. And from that day, I've been always, I've always had paid sponsorships for whatever I do, unless I choose to do it for free. Everything I do is paid. Because at some point, you have to figure out how you're gonna make it work for you. And if I'm making your brand a lot of money from my video that took me all my time and my equipment and my work and my, you're gonna pay me something, okay? So I started off with lower rates, but they were still good rates. And then as a, as from then until now, they've just been raised. As I get more followers, more likes, more work gets put into it, more better equipment, it gets put in there. Like you have to demand. If you really want something, you will make it happen. You have to demand what you want. You can't sit here and let them tell you what you're going to do, especially when it comes to these hair brands. Like you need to be like, yo, I, I, I want to be an influencer. I want to make money and you have to demand it. So would I ever go back to corporate? Hell yeah, I like corporate. For the right price and the right company, I would. And I don't have a problem with corporate, I like it. I love the structure of it, I love, I just like it. I don't, I, you know, sometimes I feel like corporate is for some people and it's not for, you know, some people, but I don't have a problem with it. I would do YouTube and 9 to 5 because I just like the feeling of, the feeling. <laughs> and stretch it like that. It should be able to fit around your head. So you wanna kind of go ahead and just actually let's clip back. <laughs> I look crazy. Let's clip back the hairs. You have to, I feel like every time, like I've had moments where I like even when I had my nine to five, I was nervous as shit. Like, yo, is this gonna work? Like, can this last long? Like, is this really what I'm doing? You know what I'm saying? But it's so I love what I do you know I have some moments some months are better than other months some months suck some months are the best when you're on like a, a natural high it just really just depends I'm gonna straighten these real quick it really just depends but you have to put in the work okay if you don't believe that you're worthy of what you're asking for you will never get it Sometimes when I ask for certain amounts, I'm not gonna lie, that shit scares me. And I'm like, uh, they're probably gonna say no. But you know what? I'm still gonna ask. I'd rather, I'd rather hear you say no than, than me just always wondering what could have been. All right, so my audio might sound a little different. Hold on, let me, um, all right. Hopefully it sounds normal again. But, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do a half up, half down thing because I have class later. I'm gonna just take out this extra piece in case I wanna make more baby hairs right there. But I'm gonna do a half up, half down, so when I go to class, my hair is not in my face, but it's still cute. I'm gonna use my curl nine. I don't know where my hot comb is. So this curl nine, guys, this curl nine gets hot as shit. This one and Muhammad. Muhammad is from Amazon. This one is like, this curl nine is a little expensive.